Welcome to the wild world of the diagnostic laboratory industry, where we focus on science, compliance, sales marketing, and self-mastery. Welcome to Lab Results with Blake. I'm your host, Blake Bork. How many times have you gotten into the room that you've been desperately trying to get into? Whether that's a doctor's office, it's a it's a boardroom, it's a decision room. It's the person that you ultimately know is going to make a decision on if your product is going to be used or not, or if uh, you're going to get a promotion or not, if you're going to get more money, if you're going to get the contract, if you're going to get the yes. How many times have you gotten into that room and when you got in the room, you realized you were in over your head? Wasted opportunity. You weren't trained on the, the, the questions that they asked. You didn't know what was coming next. You feel like you could have been better prepared. You feel like if you'd have known how this call was going to go, you could have taken advantage of it. If they would have told you what to expect, if you'd had some hint, somebody would have given you a roadmap or a blueprint that you know, you know that you know in your heart of hearts that would you would have got the yes, you'd have got the promotion, you'd have got the money, you'd have got the contract, you'd have closed the opportunity. That's training. It's training. And the problem with diagnostic labs today is nobody is training their sales reps. No one is going through, and I say nobody, there are some laboratories out there that I know of that do a really good job preparing salespeople. But the majority of them, if they have a training plan and process, it's like HR training them on HIPAA, compliance, um, things that they got to do to be able to turn in their expenses on time. They'll have uh, they'll have training or uh, an orientation where maybe the good labs will bring their reps in so that way they can meet leadership, maybe pour some samples if it's a tox lab, uh, see how pipetting is done, assession some samples so that way sales reps get a real good understanding of the problems that they can cause for the laboratory if requisition forms aren't filled out correctly. Um, you know, an onboarding process and an orientation is crucial to be able to get a salesperson up to speed. But unless you got a dog in there that's training, teaching, coaching a salesperson on what to expect when they're selling your product and your process. And it's, it's really important that this training is customized to your actual laboratory, that it's not cookie cutter. You're not going to be able to take there's some great there's a, some great sales leaders out there that are best selling authors that are in, in places that I want to be right I'd love to be on stage I'd love to be a published author I'd love to be coaching 100% full time uh, selling books that'd be great that's where I want to go so when you look at a guy like Jeb Blunt who has sales gravy and uh, or Orrin Claft pitch anything or even Gary V with his marketing you know. Um, your 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 uh, Grant Cardone with his real estate, you know, being a real estate guru and, and doing these deals. Um, Garrett White with Wake Up Warrior, you know, you, you have these gurus, if you will, inside of these industries. And the problem with most of them is that there's a cookie cutter approach that they've learned that has worked for them. They did something in a phone room. And then they teach everybody how to do this one thing that they did in phone room and they try to apply it throughout all the sales. They did this one thing with like question-based sales, right? And so then the whole, if all you got is a hammer, the whole world is a nail. Um, the challenger sale, right? Um, th there's these sale fads that come out and come around and everybody buys into them. And then they try to take that cookie cutter and they, and, and they bring it into a really specific, niched out, highly compliant, very focused, scientific, got to have the right answers, clinical patient care, human being, people can die if you get it wrong. They try to cookie cut in, in this industry and it does not work. It will not work. You're not going to be able to take something that happens in mainstream and bring it into diagnostic lab and expect your salespeople to do anything else besides have to learn on their own. <laughs> you have people who 
who, who teach these sales classes, these widespread type of sales classes, these virtual sales classes, and they teach people how to ask the right questions or how to ask a question, right? And how to close with confidence, right? And how to, this is how we structure the deal. And this is what you should do and should build rapport and ask engaging questions. And oh, cool, yeah. Okay, what does that actually look like in real life? How do you walk into a busy doctor's office that doesn't want to see you and for the last three years has had every single excuse, every single excuse not to even do a lunch with you? Since the COVID pandemic, our doctor's offices are acting completely differently towards our sales reps. How do you compete against salespeople who are coming out here and over-promising and under-delivering and downright lying to doctor's offices? How do you compete against the laboratory that actually has more metabolites and analytes on their requisition form, a better turnaround time, better technology. How do you compete against uh, uh, the, the current mindset of culture and sensitivity is all I need in infectious disease? What if the objection is around in-network versus out-of-network and you know you're selling for a laboratory that's out-of-network? Their cookie cutter sales training? Sorry, it ain't cutting this cookie. <laughs> It ain't working. You need a dog who's been there before. You need somebody who actually has been there before and understands the limitations of your laboratory. If you're a salesperson working for a laboratory, you really got to go through and diagnose with like a SWOT analysis. What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What are my opportunities? What are my threats? How am I going to sell to my strengths? And how can I continue to stack evidence for my lab leadership that they got to get ready to get the weaknesses better? Because they need to hear that from sales, but not in a dramatic, oh my God, my reputation is on the line. The laboratory lost samples. Everybody's going to think I'm stupid. Nobody cares about that. I don't care about your reputation in, in the laboratory, all right? So stop bringing drama as a salesperson to lab operations. There's no room for it. At the end of the day, it's the patient. All right, we lost a sample. The patient's worried. It's patient care. Turnaround time impacts patient care. Doesn't impact your reputation. Anytime you start tying your reputation to the fact that we lost the sample, you're putting yourself in front of the patient and that's just wrong. It's just wrong. The patient's hurting or dying or sick in need of answers. You can't tie what it's going to be for you and your paycheck and put that in front of it and talk to a lab operations person who's making a fraction of what you make as a good salesperson, all right? So if we're going to help our lab operations to understand what they have to do to advance patient care inside of the laboratory, we've got to be able to stack good evidence. So we got to train, check this out. We got to train the lab. Good sales teams train the la their labs to be able to operate efficiently. And they do it by crystal clear communication, written documentation, honest honest conversations and high integrity. I don't have to go into this, but you're wrong type of mindset. I have been and seen too many times where salespeople will come in and challenge and almost like spar and debate with lab people. And it ends up burning bridges down, man, while you're standing on the bridge. There's no reason for it. The fact is, is that the lab needs training. The lab needs sales training. It's not just sales reps that need sales training. Laboratory operations need sales training because they don't know how to talk to clients. They don't know what to expect. They don't know why the turnaround time is needed. They don't know why, man, whenever we have laboratory results and reports that are wrong, <laughs> there's QC that's out of range somehow, some way, and we're spitting out some type of a, of a, of a result. I don't know. You pick one. Uh, hemoglobin A1C, right? Uh, our magnesium's off. Um, our salts are all, all over the place. Our sodium's off. Uh, things that doctors would typically, you know, write, a, uh, say, cuminin. And uh, and our, our, our it's the coagulation uh, piece. Ah, I'm going brain dead on it. Sorry, guys. But there, there are really important blood test results that we got to make sure that we get right. And doctors will let the sales rep know first that, the information is incorrect on the report. The salesperson brings that to the laboratory. Most laboratories 
first response that I've seen at least is it's not wrong. Our reports are right. We did QC this morning or we we calibrated. We're, we're good. Our results aren't right. We did everything that we were supposed to do. We just passed our COLA inspection. The labs will go into this like spin out where they like start because they feel like they got a B or a C on a test. They don't want to be wrong. So it's very, it's very much a defensive posture that a lab can take an untrained lab to receive sales training and customer service training and patient care training. An untrained laboratory will go defense. They will go protection. They will posture outright pretend until finally they do all the background research and they realize, oh man, we forgot to clean the Forgot to clean the heads. <laughs> oh, it was a reagent manufacturer's problem. Oh, you know what? When they did the validations, the validations were done wrong. But we had to go through hell in a handbasket to get to that point as a sales team, right? Labs and lab operations need sales training. No different than when we bring in our sales reps to do an orientation and they learn how to pour pee. They learn how to pipette and they learn how to input information. It's very much a two-way street. And, and, and to ask a consultant to come in and do sales training and they're not aware of those pieces, friends, it ain't going to work. It's going to be the wrong, the wrong solution for the wrong problem. And those typically cost us more time, energy, effort, and money. There's financial cost here. There's opportunity cost here. There's time cost here. There's real life examples of the benefit of training. You can train yourself. Your laboratory can, can train you. You can get with experts inside the laboratory and you guys can do a think tank. You, don't, you ain't got to hire me to come in and organize a round table where your sales leaders are saying, these are our biggest problems. I don't have an answer for it. Don't take it personally. And your lab operations people are like, this is where we waste the most time and energy and effort whenever we're talking to salespeople and we're hunting these things down. If we could fix these mistakes, we'd have an answer for it and bring the two sides together. It's really all it takes to be able to get a same page meeting going. I could recommend you go read, um, go read something by Gina Wickman and 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 buy into the entrepreneur operating system on how you run your meetings and run a level 10 meeting but ultimately you got to bring people together between both sides so that way they can train each other you probably have the answers for what your laboratory needs already inside of your laboratory a facilitator who can pull them out somebody who knows how to do the documentation so that way you can train new people. You can automate the onboarding process. Um, you have a an error log. You have a continuous improvement log. Like those things, I say they should be standard in labs, but I've also had to fight to get those things installed in labs that I have a stake in. So it's not, I can't say that those things are standard. If you're, if you're not wired for patient care, and to continue to advance patient care, and that'd be the only thing you, you really kind of care about whenever it comes to the reason why we own a laboratory. These things aren't gonna are gonna be lost on you. They're just, just like duck off your, you know, water off your back if you're a duck. They're not gonna stick. And to which case, if you find yourself surrounded by a leadership team that's like that, you probably start looking for a way out. So with that, think about where you can train yourself inside of this process. If you need help. From a science standpoint, reach out to us. We have some video-based training to be able to help with the scientific, whether it's molecular, it's toxicology, it's NGS, oncology. We can, you know, pathology, basic chemistry, blood. You know, we've got some video-based training. We've got some tips and some tricks that we can offer you. If it's sales and, and, and roll call, best thing I can do for you is put you in a group with eight to 12 other people who are in the same type of situation with you. So that way we've got some meat in the room to be able to do some role play, to be able to bounce some things off of one another, to be able to help. We are actually putting together right now an executive um, a sales leader program where we'll have eight to 12 actual sales leaders 
who want to get better at coaching and mentoring their laboratory sales reps. And so it's this, there's this middle management layer, man, that needs attention inside of this industry. Those folks need development and they need to develop themselves and have a safe place for them to be able to talk about their problems and their issues and, and, and want to get better. And they should be surrounded by peers, not for the purpose of competing against one another, right? But for collaborating. So that way we can all get better together. The big box laboratories, they have the budgets to do these things. The step down, everybody else, <laughs> that's not a trillion dollar market cap. We got to work together so that way we can develop this industry for ourselves so we can keep up, so we can collaborate, so that way we can stay in the game and we can focus on the patient care. Because if we focus on the care, guys, I'm telling you, the care is going to carry us through. You've been listening to Lab Results with Blake, with your host, Blake Bork. Please like, share, and subscribe this podcast. Remember, greatness is contagious.